Hello, lovelies. Let's start crafting and make a tail or eye smile, I like to say. DIY number one. I'm going to be using an on for you outdoor Bluetooth speaker. They challenged me to turn this speaker into a Halloween theme. I love these speakers. They are waterproof, guys, and they are wireless. You can plug them in and not use the battery, or you can charge it and still it the sound is phenomenal by the way you can hang them outside they're weatherproofed they're very heavy you can hang them in the patio put them on a table i mean on for you they have bicycle speakers shower speakers if you're looking for lighting for your parties they're the place to go they have wonderful lighting for indoor outdoor they have every lighting that will fit your needs for a wonderful party or get together, or even if you just want to have cool lighting. Many selections of different sizes and different styles of flood lightings and black lights. They also have the patio string lights, fairy lights, battery operated, gorgeous, look at that. They have them in all the colors. With the white, they have them in like a, a real pretty frost blue. And then they have it that yellow glowy look when you order these speakers you get two in the box i will leave on for you link in my description box for you so you can check them out now this here is a flower pot stand and i found them on offer up and i got two of them guys yes and they're wrought iron absolutely love them i seen them and i had to have them spray paint them with my krylon black flat paint and that's all I did. I love that this speaker looks like a lantern already. And then with the lights on, when the music's playing, it blinks so beautiful. The sound is wonderful. So I just got this creepy cloth from the Dollar Tree. I just stretched it on the top, a little hole, and put it right over the handle and the top of the lantern speaker. And then I just draped it right over, see the top? So beautiful the way it lays down and then with the light on that plant stand. And the speaker fit perfectly on there. So happy with that. The button is easy access right on the side, an on and off switch, your Bluetooth connection, the on for the light, or you can turn it to one light, the button to sync both speakers, and then you have your volume buttons. On the opposite side, it is where you can plug in your cord to charge your lantern speaker, or you could plug it in and play it that way. If you're gonna use it more than 12 hours, then plug it in and you can have it playing and it won't uh, run out of battery, it'll keep charged. So it could be either wireless or plug-in, that's what I love. And I love that the buttons are right there so easy right look at that on Bluetooth lights timer and up and down and you're in sync
What's so great about this lantern speaker is it goes indoors and outdoors. You can hang it in your patio, put it on a table. It is waterproof. That I love. And I you don't have to put creepy cloth on it. I love that it looks like Halloween feel with it for right now. That's what I was challenged to do was to just decorate it to go with the Halloween theme. And I thought, what simple way, budget friendly, put some creepy cloth right over it. And it looks awesome the way it changes its colors and the way it flows gives it that creepy Halloween vibes. And then after Halloween, take the creepy cloth off and put a wreath around it or a ribbon, a bow, and you got a Christmas feel, right? For your Christmas party. And then after the holidays, you have yourself some beautiful lantern speakers for your patio or for indoors. So much fun. I don't know. I absolutely, absolutely fell in love with these. And the sound, you guys, the bass is on point. The sound is nice. And then when you in sync both speakers, wow, you got yourself a nice party going on. <laughs> I will leave the link to on for you in my description box for you. Thank you on for you for challenging me to do something great with these speakers. DIY number two. Let's get started. I got one of my old pictures that I had. I used this uh, for my wedding. I did find two big frames like this. I was lucky the day couple days before my wedding when I found these they were on the side someone was throwing them out and I grabbed them I could not believe I found these these were a treasure hey somebody's trash can be somebody's treasure that's what I always say and this was now what I'm doing I it did say till death do us part but I am taking it apart so what I'm doing is I'm using yes my old trusty blow dryer and a spackle I don't know what you call this. I just I know it's for spackle or whatever, but I'm using this tool. It's sharp on the edges. I love using it for scraping labels and things off. And all I'm doing was just heating it up and scraping the stickers off. And they seem to come off pretty easy. So after I took all the stickers off, I got this, my sander block. I get this from the Dollar Tree. And just to smooth everything out, I just went over it with the sand, sand block. The little letters that you see there is because I kind of like used a painter's pen when I did that. So I'm just gonna paint over it after I smooth it out. So now I'm gonna use my trusty blow dryer again and take all that dust off. And this print I got from Amazon. I will leave the link in my description box for you. I absolutely fell in love with this when I seen it. Isn't that beautiful? I'm gonna use my plaid apple barrel black acrylic paint and I'm just gonna go over my, it's already painted, but I'm gonna go over where, you know, I sanded it down and cover the lettering. So I didn't do a lot of paint. I just put a little bit just to go over that. I'm not painting the border in the frame because I already love the way it looks. I'm just going to leave it the way it is. So I'm just going around the edges inside where the picture will be. It doesn't have to be perfect on the inside like with the same stroke. Uh, you know how I usually like to paint and go the same, the same way, the same direction. But for this, I really didn't pay too much attention to that because I am going to be sanding it down once it's all put together because I want it to give it an aged old look. So now I'm going to use my satin Mod Podge and I am just going to put a, the Mod Podge right in the center where the print will be. I do use quite a bit of it because I want to make sure that my print stays really nice on the, on the picture. And then I get my sealant, my adhesive sealant from Mod Podge by Plaid, and I'm just gonna spray it around the edges, just 
so it has that same little bit of a shimmer look and then I'm gonna get my little spray bottle of water and just lightly mist the back of my picture and that helps keep it from wrinkling I love this roller it's from plaid Mod Podge and uh, when you're Mod Podging and you're doing something like this I just get it and I just roll it on there and it takes the bubbles and the wrinkles out I absolutely love this tool but hint hint make sure you take your print out first and lay it out upside down where it tends to relax when I took it straight out of the box yeah you can see me fighting there it kept trying to roll roll itself closed again so I had to force it yes I was forcing it but that's okay because I got it to work finally <laughs> so now I'm just adding some more Mod Podge underneath and using my rollers just to make sure no bubbles and then I put extra Mod Podge right there on the seams to make sure that it's not gonna come up. And then I just go with the Mod Podge with my little plaid paintbrush and I'm just gonna brush the Mod Podge all the way around. And then I also go around the edges because I do want it to all be one, look like one whole piece B. <laughs> I can't talk, I'm telling you. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I just want it to look like one cohesive piece. You know what I'm trying to say, right? You guys get it. You get it. Press on all the edges, making sure it's nice and smooth. Get my trusty blow dryer again and get my rolling, I'm going to call it my rolling pin. And I just roll it around, roll it around on there, making sure it's flat and drying it as I'm doing this. And then once it's dry, I get that sealant spray again and this time I'm going to spray the whole entire frame I'm gonna do the border the frame everything and then I just get my plaid brush again it's a it's really soft brush paintbrush and I'm just gonna go over it just to smooth it out And there you have it. I did go over it with my sand block because I did want it to have that aged look. You see how it looks a little aged on the sides. You'll see it. And I sanded over the whole entire, even the print, because I wanted it to look aged and, uh, you know, old gothic. And it reminded me of me and my handsome devil when we got married. I like to thank on for you for challenging me again with that beautiful lantern speaker don't forget check my description box and for their link go check them out please give this video a thumbs up subscribe i really love for you to be part of my crafty leaning world family and if you like shabby chic check crafty leaning's channel out on tuesdays for leaning shabby tuesday i post weekly videos it was my pleasure crafting with you today. Hugs, kisses, and fairy dust wishes, lovelies. Stay kind, be kind yourself and others.